When most PAs or NPs think about moving into a non-clinical role, I think most of us think about being a medical science liaison. And that is a great job and great opportunity for us to move into. But within the world of medical industry, there are hundreds of different kinds of jobs that we could do. But I think the problem for a lot of people is not believing that we're qualified to move into that, thinking that we're just kind of the run of a mill PA or NP and, and we're not like a specialist. How do we find those jobs? How do we prepare ourselves and our resume to get those jobs? All of these different kinds of questions come to mind. Hi, it's Michelle with The Medicine Couch. My whole goal with this channel is to help you find and build a career of your dreams that builds on the education and the experience you already have. So in this video today, I'm interviewing a PA who made that transition herself from being a clinical PA to a non-clinical role nine years ago. She's not an MSL and she's not quite a sales rep. She's somewhere kind of in between. She's gonna tell us a little bit about her job and she's gonna tell us about this course that she has developed that will guide you step-by-step to make that transition from clinical to non-clinical role. So if any of that sounds great to you, then please stay tuned because this video is for you. My name is Rachel Jergensen. I am a physician assistant and I have been a PA for 26 years this month. Tell us a little bit about what your career path has been, just kind of briefly as a PA. I spent the bulk of my time as a PA in cardiology. So, so that's really, you know, a love. I also did some gastroenterology when I first got out. And then I have been on the medical industry side for nine years now. And so when you say medical industry side, what does that uh, entail and what are you doing specifically? So basically it is any kind of medical device, pharmaceuticals, diagnostics, capital equipment that really supports um, hospitals, clinics, providers, patients in medicine. So whether it's capital equipment, selling imaging, whether it's um, diagnostic labs and specialty labs, whether it's genetic testing, that type of thing. So I've worked in that field um, at my prior job and I am currently in diagnostics and in, in what I do now. And so I work for a very large company. We sell the equipment and then we sell all the reagents that go along with performing the assays. So what is your actual job title? It's key account manager and a value expansion specialist. So what key account manager means is that I have seven states that I cover and I go into the large institutions, kind of like your Vanderbilt or your um, University of Mississippi Medical Center, University of Arkansas Medical um, Systems. So go into those large accounts and as they bring on new assays, let's say high sense troponin is, is a very big assay right now that people are bringing on. It's part of the chest pain guidelines. So I will help them as they implement that assay in training their providers. So their physicians, getting the cardiologists and the ER together, getting the PAs, the NPs, the nurses, so that they know what's coming down the pipeline because it is a change in going from different measurements, units of measure and that type of thing. So it's just basically helping them get on the same page as they implement different um, assays. So that's what I do. And I just really talk about the clinical value. So it's really cool, like having that clinical background and being able to bring that to the table, you know, from on this side. So is that the same as a medical science liaison or is it, a, it sounds a little bit different? It has a little bit of a medical science liaison component to it, but I am related to sales. Basically, I bring like the clinical knowledge and the papers and the literature, but that's really in sales kind of what you do too is like you fully represent a product by having all this base knowledge and then you speak to that, you speak to the literature and then you help people and providers understand like where that fits, you know, in their clinical practice so they can use it with their patients appropriately and not inappropriately. Because the last thing you want is for someone to use your product inappropriately. You made this transition about nine years ago from clinical medicine yeah. into the um, medical industry side. What are your thoughts about that transition that you made? Like, how do you think it benefited you and what, what do you like or dislike about now not being in the clinical side? It was a huge step for me, number one. I was scared. I mean, you work really hard to get a degree and to practice medicine and you think that's what you want to do. And, and I wasn't necessarily happy with where I was. 
and I saw people going into administration and I thought maybe that would be really cool, but nobody was hiring PAs, you know, for administration roles at the time. It didn't seem to me, I just really wanted more. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to have like a career trajectory that was upward and with upward mobility. And so it was scary. It was scary to admit that, okay, I'm not in the position that I want to be in. It's scary to admit that like I was fearful. I was scared of what other people would think of me, you know, because like here you are a provider and, and you're caring for these patients. And, you know, some people are like, oh, well, you're going into industry. That's the, you know, some people call it the dark side, but, you know, I don't see it like that at all. Like I get what they were saying, but um, I don't feel like it's that way. And I love it on the side. Like I don't worry about patients um, suing me whenever <laughs> they walk out the door. I don't have that stress and that trapped feeling that I felt sometimes in medicine of, I feel like I was kind of pigeonholed in my career. And um, I feel a lot of freedom. I had, I, I moved because I needed the flexibility. I needed flexibility for my kids' schedule at the time. And I wanted to have fun. I was not having fun in my career. I sought out people who were having fun, or it looked to me like they were having fun in their career, doing something kind of similar. And that's where I found like medical sales and, and the medical science liaisons. Like they seem to have a passion and a joy. And so when I made that transition, I know this is a really long answer, um, but I love it on the side. Like I've been here nine years. I, I don't like, I miss the patient interaction, but I don't miss all the other stuff. You know, yeah. don't miss it at all. Don't miss yeah. the worry. I don't feel like my brain hurts as much as sometimes whenever you come home, like it's a different way. It's a different kind of stress. Yeah. And this isn't a down on, on clinical medicine. There are people who have just absolutely fabulous positions that they love. And there's a lot of, you know, um, a lot of joy that can be found in clinical medicine, but it's absolutely. Just, there, but there are some realities about it. Is all, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> absolutely. 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 And you have to be able to recognize that practicing medicine is for a lot of people and they do really, really well at but when you're not getting fed to and it's not bringing you joy and you're so stressed out and, and you need to take care of yourself, you know, to be able to say like, okay, I have to do something for me or I have to do something for my family and to step away from that, you have to find joy in your career. The whole reason that I'm talking to you today, though, specifically is because you decided to, to do something about helping people find their their options yes. in life, right? And so why don't you yes. tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing? Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I appreciate the opportunity to share. Really, so um, I have developed a course. Number one, I wrote, I wrote a book for physician assistants to um, encourage them in their walk of life and their walk of practice and published it in 2020. But being an in industry, people, you go into offices and people ask you all the time, it can be, nurses, PAs and PAs. I've had doctors ask me, you know, radiology tech, dietitians, people ask you, how did you get into industry? Like what steps did you take? And so I have helped people along the way, like get into industry, give them some tips. I've reviewed resumes. So I had been doing this kind of in the background all the time. Yeah. And I kind of thought like, why don't I do this for healthcare providers? Because I know there's people out there who are like me, not, not every PA and PA, like medical provider out there is looking to change. I realize that, but for those who are unhappy, who are ready to change, I developed a course called mastering medical industry as a healthcare provider. It's basically six easy steps, you know, to really go from the frustration of clinical frontline medicine to kind of a fun, flexible freedom in medical industry. It teaches providers how to get into medical industry as a medical science liaison, as a medical sales rep, whether that be in pharmaceuticals, medical device, or diagnostics. You know, I started out as a clinical specialist. I talk about that. I talk about the training aspect, the education aspect. There are so many different jobs in medical industry that we are already qualified for. You know, there's no special training. You don't have to get another degree, any of those things. So I just put this course together. 
thinking that I think I can help a lot of people who have said, I'm ready for career growth. I want to make more money. I want to have potential to to take a leadership role. So that's really kind of why I developed this course. How is the course divided up? What exactly are you going to be telling people? So number one, the course is interactive. I want people to know I am not lecturing to you where you are not doing anything. Like you are going to have some action steps along the way. I have created PDFs asking like deep questions and asking like, you know, where do you see yourself? What areas are you interested in? And kind of formatting it along the way so that it it takes you to be able to interact along the way. Which is great and probably what a lot of people don't think about because I I know um, people personally here like, I think I want to do that, but I don't really know. I don't really know what I want to do. I just know that right now I can't continue in clinical medicine. So uh, I think that's an important first step. And I'm glad you went there first to, to help people figure out what it is that they are, are looking and, and what they're feeling. Cause sometimes Absolutely. it's really hard to pinpoint that. And and that's the thing too, is like, I have an, a free webinar and we can talk about that where people can kind of come and find out like, is this really something that they want to do? Oh, nice. And then so back to the course, like it's divided into seven modules. So there's over seven hours of content in the modules. So I'm launching the course again in January to have live question and answer session and live group coaching sessions so that like, let's say we take somebody's resume and I put it up and, you know, it may just be one person that I'm interacting with at the time, but everybody gets to learn from it. So we do that. We do business presentations to work on business presentations that you might present during the interview. The course is like seven modules. So we talk about like really the mindset of being coming from healthcare into medical industry. We talk about um, the perks of medical industry, like all the things, you know, having your car paid for, having, you know, you can win President's Club, like I've gotten to go to Hawaii and Scotland and just really fun things, having your insurance and paid for. And, you know, if you want to travel, like you have that opportunity. Like when I first got into industry, I had a very small territory because I needed to be home. Now I have seven states. I, my kids are gone so yeah. I can travel more. So like it's, there's this ebb and flow of medical industry that can really fit your lifestyle. When we talk about networking and then getting resumes, applications, cover letters together. I teach people how to craft and create a resume for each type of position that they're going for. So it takes time, but we make it really easy. It's kind of a step-by-step process. And then we talk about what to do before you interview, like how to research a company, how to um, network with the people that you're interviewing, what's appropriate. Then, you know, just really rocking the interview, like being as prepared as possible, understanding questions that might be answered. And then really talking about sales and representing a product, whether you're you know, on the medical affairs side with medical science liaisons, or you're on the sales side, there is a way to go about kind of understanding the industry, understanding the acronyms, you know, just like in medicine, there's a ton of acronyms that people don't understand. In medical industry, like, I want people to add value that first day. So I'm going to teach them how to add value. And then at the end of the course, once you complete all the course, there's a certificate. And so you can put that on your resume to show people, because a lot of people, if they're interested in sales, they're like, I have no background in sales. But like this shows people like with the certificate that, okay, I'm doing the things that I need to do to get into this industry. I think a lot of people may be sitting there saying, well, I've only been, you know, in clinical practice three or five years or, or whatever. And I you know, don't work in a specialty. I don't know all the things about Absolutely. cardiology. Is there really a place for me in, in, in industry? And what, what do you have to say to that? So absolutely, there's a place like you have like the best training, like having that healthcare background, they are hiring people in, you know, beginning medical sales jobs with basically no medical background at all. They give them the medical background. If you're, you know, representing a lung drug, they're going to go through like lung anatomy, like pulmonology, like pathophysiology, they're going to go over all of those things again. So you as a provider walk in the door with so much experience and so much background. And it's amazing how quickly, like it just comes back to you (laughs) if you haven't studied that in a minute. So 
you are prescribing medicines every single day. Like you are an expert at some type of medicines. Um, you are prescribing diagnostic testing every single day. You are ordering it, interpreting it, and educating patients, their family members, you know, other providers who might call you that are referring physicians, referring providers. So you are more of an expert than you think. You are closer than you think. It is easier to get in than you think. So I think anybody who doesn't have that, you know, super focused specialty, internal medicine, family practice, pediatrics, like you have more experience than you realize. And I kind of walk you through the steps of like knowing that too, of writing things down. Okay. I know, I know this, 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 these are the things I'm interested in. And this is what I'm good at. I love what you talked about that they're hiring people that have no medical background to do these jobs. Like we don't, I don't think we think about that enough. We have a master's degree for the most part, everybody that's at PRP has at least right. a master's degree now. So they're hiring people, I'm sure at these, at these um, pharmaceutical companies that have a bachelor's degree and like basic sciences, probably, I would assume, right? Yes. I mean, yes. and, and, and so if we compare ourselves even right then, forget anything you might've right. done in clinical practice, you're coming in with a master's degree, you've, learn medicine <laughs> against somebody who's a bachelor's degree who has general science maybe and stuff and we and we somehow we think we're not qualified i don't i don't understand that <laughs> it's our mindset and so i work a lot on mindset of you're closer than you think you are you know way more than you know and and who better who better to teach providers about products than providers we are the best people because we yeah. get it. We understand, we know what's important. And so we know the meat of this is what's going to help them make a decision on whether or not they can use this product. This is what's going to help them make the clinical decision, whether or not we've ever used that product or not. If we're interested in the company and we have a passion, like I don't want anybody to go, you know, work with a company where they don't have passion about their products. Like they need to love what they're doing. But if you have a passion about that, you can learn it because of that. Your foundation, like your foundation is amazing, like just amazing. And, and, you know, in my job, I've been able to help marketing. I've been able to help training because they, they'll come to me and say, you have a clinical knowledge. Like, what do you think about this? Is this going to hit home for people? So like you can help people not just the providers that you work with, but you can help your own company greatly. So like, you know, we are the perfect people to go into this industry. And are you seeing uh, more and more job openings and opportunities for, for PAs and NPs? Because I, I, I think some people probably too worry that, oh, now the it's going to be saturated. There's so many people wanting to move from clinical into these positions that there's probably nothing available anyway. What is, what's the reality right. on that? So that's a really good question. Yesterday I looked at LinkedIn and so I typed in medical science liaison. There's over 800 positions. I, I typed in medical um, device sales. There's 18,000 positions. I typed in medical sales. There's I think 11,000. So like there, like all the titles that I typed in, I think there were five, there were over 45,000 jobs on wow. LinkedIn yesterday. So like, if you're thinking there's no jobs out there for you, <laughs> there are jobs and there are plenty of them. It's like getting your mindset right and knowing like how to apply, you know, how to craft that resume to get you noticed. That's the key. That's the hard part. And that's what I really work on with my students. One thing else I thought of is, um, do you have in the course or somewhere available on your site, like a list of the different titles that, because I, I don't do. think people know like what to look for. I do. I do. So, um, so in the course, so one of the PDFs that I have, so there's probably about 10 or 15 different PDFs that I do. Um, one of the PDFs is probably a list of about 30 different job titles. Um, if any of your students do my free webinar that I'm going to host, if they like, you know, get on my email list or anything like that, then I also have a PDF that I'm giving away for free that has probably about 15 of those titles okay. on it. So, um, yeah, so it, you got to know what to look for instead of just putting in, you know, medical sales, that kind yeah. of thing. There are so many more, like you can put that in and there's tons of jobs out there, but there are so many more things that, that we definitely qualify for. So yes.
Yeah, you may read a, a, a posting for something and, and it may be a title that that you totally qualify for and you'd be interested in, but you don't know what it means. So you kind of gloss over it. It's like, oh, I don't know what that is. So. <laughs> exactly. And something new that like I'm just now learning about is like there are thought leader liaison positions out there. They are hiring PAs and NPs as you know, key opinion leaders within industry to go and talk to key opinion leaders about products. So they're they're targeting and looking for specific providers to come and work for the companies as they call it thought leader liaisons. And there's some other titles that like I need to research and do some more research on too that uh, newer things coming out. So that leads to another question that I hear and see people say all the time is that, right. oh, I don't I don't want to go back and get my doctorate and I'm going to have to have a doctorate if I want to work as an MSL or in any of these other roles. What are your thoughts on that? Is that true or is that a, a, a fallacy that we have? No, that's like that is one of the top questions. I don't think you have to have that PhD or your doctorate or anything like that. Does it help? Absolutely. The more degrees, the more letters behind your name, that's always going to help. But you don't have to to get into medical industry. I have a master's degree. I don't have anything other than that. I do, you know, personal, you know, growth. I do courses, that type of thing on the side to help me now, but I don't have any other formal degrees. Okay. So people have been watching and they are excited and they're like, wow, there may be a place in, in industry for me after all. And they're interested in purchasing the course. How do they go about doing that? So if you're interested in purchasing the course, you can go to onepatientatatime.com slash course. So, and it's the number one. So onepatientatatime.com slash course. And um, you can find out all the information on the course. I have several different levels um, for wherever you kind of are on your journey. And so you can get the course. And um, with the course, I have a private Facebook community. That's where we kind of do the hot seat, I like to call it, where we look at the resume, we look at the business plan, we do some mock interviews as well. I also have a level where patients, not patients, providers can purchase individual like one-on-one -on -one sessions with me for individualized coaching, strategic coaching. You know, if you want to have coaching right before you walk into an interview or have a phone interview, we get on the phone and do like a 45 minute session so that you're ready to go. We've worked through your answers individually. So I just kind of wanted to make sure people had what they wanted in this course. Um, if you just want the information, that's awesome. If you want the information, the Facebook community, or if you want, you know, the information, the Facebook community and the one on one, because you're like super serious about this and you're like all gung ho, like I've got you covered. OK, great. Um, and uh, you are being generous enough. You're offering a discount, right, to people who are yes. watching this program. What what discount do they get? Absolutely. So I am offering a 20% discount for your viewers. And that is going to be if you type in Michelle, so 1L and <laughs> Michelle 23. So it's M-I-C-H-E-L-E 23 all one word together. And so that will be a 20% discount. And how long is the discount good for? So from now through 2023, and then just realize like, as you're looking through the different options, the live um, question and answer Facebook kind of group training, that's only going to be offered a couple of times a year. The course itself, because the modules are on demand, will always be available. But that group coaching is only going to be available a couple of times a year, if that makes sense. So definitely, you know, check the website, that type of thing. But once you buy the course, the course is going to be there for at least two years. And, you know, you will have access to that for two years from the purchase date at the least. And you're always able to come back to the coaching anytime I offer coaching, because once you buy in, you're in, you're part of the family. And when is the next live Facebook uh, group that you have going on? Uh, the next one is going to be in January. So it is available now. And January 17th is the last day to get in on the live Q&A, you know, for this round of six weeks of Q&A and then kind of hot seat uh, group coaching. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. The link uh, to Rachel's website uh, where you can check out the course and also the discount code uh, will be listed again down in the description box below. 
Uh, well, thank you so much, Rachel. This, I think, is going to help a lot of people. Um, I am excited to see PAs, NNPs out there doing entrepreneurial things in medicine. Um, a, another example of things that are open to us beyond just working in clinical medicine. So thanks for yes. joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity just to share with your audience. Thank you for what you do for PAs, NNPs, and providers out there. Like, it's it's awesome, Michelle. So thank, thank you for what I you do. I appreciate it. <laughs> I always get so excited when I do these interviews and realize all of the different opportunities that are available to PAs and NPs. If you are looking for somebody who has been where you're at and will help you move into these non-clinical roles, then I highly recommend you check out Rachel's course. So don't forget the discount code and the link are in the description box below. Now, if you want to learn more about what an MSL is and what they do or how to do effective networking, then you can watch these videos here or check out my non-clinical playlist on my main channel page. Thanks for joining me. Take care, stay sane, and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.